Praise the Lord. Welcome back, saints and seekers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining me. We have been doing a Bible study, Bible reading, some comments on uh, the book of John. So we are to John chapter 15. If you are someone new joining me uh, and you're trying to read the Bible through or read certain sections of the Bible to stay in the Word right now, that is a really good plan. You can back up to where I begin in chapter 1. It is interrupted with some meditation devotions in between those. Um, so, But you can follow it through and you can catch up with the reading. But we will continue now with chapter 15 of John. It's about Jesus, the true vine. You know, as a Christian, we have to stay connected to the Lord. We do that through worship and praise, study of the word, and prayer. Uh, if we have relationship with the Lord or anyone, we talk to them, we communicate. It's not a good uh, partnership where people do not speak to one another. So he wants us in relationship with him, and this uh, reading the word regularly, daily, is part of that. John chapter 15, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. As a gardener, I know the benefits of pruning shrubs pruning back flowers, even uh, perennial flowers. They can bloom, and if you cut many of them back, they will have a second beautiful flush of flowers. So when he talks about the Lord pruning us, things that are dead in us, things that are not being productive, he can prune that back, and then we can develop fruit. And... Um, we know that we need pruning. We need things taken out of our lives that aren't beneficial. They're not helping us live for the Lord. And we need those things in our lives that do help us produce fruit. And one of them is reading this word. Verse 3, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Well, there's how powerful the word is. There's another scripture that tells us by the washing of the word. That's how I felt when I first went into a Pentecostal church and I had been very sinful and I just bawled through about three sermons. But it was such a cleansing before I ever hit the baptismal waters to be baptized in Jesus' name. That word was washing me. I was repenting and sorrowful with godly sorrow and uh, I was so grateful of the mercy and love I felt from God that he would incline to someone as sinful as me. And he will do that for you too if you've been in great sin. He's not a respecter of persons. Jesus died on that cross when we were yet in sin and very unlovable. Praise God. Verse 4, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. I quote the end of that scripture often. I tell the Lord in prayer, I know I can do nothing without you, Lord. Verse 6. If a, a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. So we just have a channel through Jesus to the Father when we are abiding in the Lord. Verse 8. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. <clears throat> As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. 
These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another, as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you, that ye love one another. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord. <clears throat> if they have persecuted me, they will persecute, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled, that is written in their law, they hated me without a cause. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me, and ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. Sorry, I had a little bit of jagged reading. I was struggling with my eyesight. I don't have the best light here. So he will send the Comforter to us, the Spirit of Truth. And when he has come, he will lead us into all truth. You know, when the disciples, apostles stood up on the day of Pentecost, they told us to repent. They told the Jewish people there to repent. But this is scripture for us too. If we're going to believe in Jesus and call on his name to be saved, we have to repent. We have to turn from the way we were living, which had much wickedness and sin in it, and we have to invite Jesus in and his nature in to help us overcome that sin. We are to be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of sins. Remission means the putting away of sin. So there is something real that happens in water baptism in his name. It was Jesus that died on the cross. It was Jesus' blood that covered us. So when you go down in the waters of baptism, your old sinful man is going down in that water, and you are coming up a new creature in Jesus Christ. It is important. And the scripture continues to tell us, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So we, when we believe in Jesus, we receive eternal life. We can ask to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And when the Holy Ghost has come, we have this comforter with us. We have this one leading us into all truth. And we have a boldness to witness. There's many people like me that were introverts. They didn't want anybody looking at them, hearing their voice. They just want to burrow back somewhere. But when the Holy Ghost comes in and you love the Savior, you speak. You can't help it. It's like what the prophets say. It's like fire shut up in my bones. When I knew what the Lord had delivered and saved me from, I wanted to speak for him. I can remember blubbering in church, trying to give a testimony. I was so overcome with the mercy of God. And everyone tolerated me doing that. <laughs> 
service after service. I wanted to speak for him, but I was so overcome by the mercy, I would just blubber. <laughs> if you've ever heard anybody trying to talk when they're crying, it's it's ridiculous, right? But everyone was patient and loving with me, and I appreciate that. They knew the Lord had delivered me and saved me from much. They understood. Well, I don't know what all someone may have done that's listening to this, but you can't go too far that the Lord can't save you. And we've gone too far in this present generation. It is just wickedness, wickedness out there. And many of us have been partakers of that wickedness. He's dealing with people that are making atrocious decisions about other people's lives because he would show mercy to them if they would repent. But many won't repent. They will go out with their pride. But you don't have to. Jesus and his mercy is available. And if someone has godly sorrow and truly repents for their sin and invites Jesus in, he will save them. Well, that's what I'm sharing with you. That's John chapter 15. We've got to abide in the vine if we want to do anything for the Lord. We can do nothing without him. Be blessed. I love you. Jesus loves you more.